Before we even get started with this video, my rock stars, let me ask you a question. Do any of you still eat the occasional candy? Whether it's a piece of chocolate, hard or soft candy, do you oftentimes, at least if you don't, do you feel the temptation? Because if your answer is yes, it further confirms that what I'm about to share with you today is not just probable, but very possible. And it is exactly step by step how to make millions of dollars selling candy. know that the majority of candies that are sold are actually sold to adults? Yep. And did you also know that as I shared in this video that candy is a recession proof business because what do we do when we're not at our best or not feeling upbeat? We reach in that candy jar and grab a sweet treat. So why not figure out a way to get something that most people do to make you, my rock stars, millions of dollars? That's what we're gonna do today on this video, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel, my rock stars. And to those of you who are not yet rock stars, the invitation is wide open. Just click that subscribe button and I'm looking forward to welcoming you as the newest rock star on the block. And I see the comments where you're saying, I'm a rock star, but how do I become a rock star club member? Just go below this video, look for the description, click on more, and you'll see a link where it says Patreon slash Odetta Rocket Car. And you click on that link, and that link will give you access to becoming a member of the Rock Stars Club. Now that said, let me jump into the video. Now, you're probably wondering, where does Odetta come up with these crazy ideas? I have a confession to make. Do you know that almost every morning when I wake up, I wake up with at least one way to make a million US dollars in my head? And no, my rock stars, I don't typically go to bed with money on my mind. Oh yeah, it happens, but not all the time. But I guess my brain is just wired that way to think about how to make money around the clock. And these ideas vary from something as simple as selling candy to something as extreme as creating a platform and building a business where we can actually salvage the credit for those persons who are struggling to get loans. And I share it in this video here. But that said, today is no different. So what I've decided to do is to share these ideas with you so that you can determine if it's a good match and if you can use it to achieve your financial freedom. And today's business idea, as I said earlier, is using candy to make millions of dollars. As simple as that, my rock stars. Now, this is a business model that I actually tested. And at the time, I called the project 
corporate candy. And here is the concept at a high level in terms of how it worked. So the first thing I did was I decided who we were going to target as our customer base or as our clients. And instead of going from business to customer, which is B to C, I decided why not go business to business, which is B to B when you are selling to another business and they're selling to the end user or the customer. What that does is I'm able to send these organizations an invoice that they can honor as opposed to chasing after people who are customers and trying to get paid. It also allowed me to scale this up because by selling to a company Company that already has an established customer base, I'm not having to find new customers every time I want to grow my business, I can leverage an existing customer base. So here's who I targeted. I targeted large companies and also small companies, especially those that had a receptionist desk. I targeted doctor's offices. I targeted gas stations, waiting areas, because when people are waiting to get a service, a good treat is when they get to that desk and are about to be served, the person at that desk can offer them a candy. And I did this even in government offices and also in some small hotels. Because remember, people are always waiting in line. And what's the best way to say thank you for your patience, other than using the actual words, is to give them a candy when when they sit down or offer them something that they can have that will bring some amount of comfort and candy is the perfect comfort food. Now this model that I'm about to explain can work with almost any candy of your choice. I chose kisses for a number of reasons. You can actually get kisses wrapped in different colors so blue red green wrapping for your kisses and for me that was an opportunity to align the color of the wrapper for the kiss with the company's branding color so for example if the company's logo had blue on it why not give them blue kisses so i liked it for that reason for the second reason as long as it's kept at a good temperature it's very easy to ship for the third reason, it's a candy that's also a chocolate. And the fourth reason is I've never met anyone who didn't like kisses. And that's why I chose kisses. Now you need to evaluate your customer base or the businesses that you're going to sell to, to determine who their customers are and determine from there what's the best candy that you should market. You can also do more than one candy. You don't have to stick to just kisses or just Hershey's or gummy beers. Depending on your customer base or the businesses that you're going to supply, you can determine what works best. In this example, I'm going to stick to just kisses because it's easier to explain the financial outcome for one candy type. Now, after identifying your product, the second thing that you need to do is to determine what's going to differentiate you. Because every Tom, Dick, Harry, and even Mary are selling candy out there or can sell candy. So how are you going to differentiate yourself in a competitive market? What I did with the kisses was I offered a few things. The first is if you had a receptionist desk, I actually gave you a modern looking candy jar that I would refill daily or weekly depending on your orders. The second is I made it convenient. So instead of these companies having to go out and buy candy, I said to them, I'll have somebody come and replenish your supplies at your location and I'll just send you an invoice at the end of the month and you can pay within 30 to 90 days. So that resulted in the company not having to exhibit any effort at all to keep their candy jars or their candy on shelf if it's like a gas station or a service center. And the third differentiator is I actually asked the companies if I could teach their service professionals 
for example, their receptionist, how to offer the candy to appease customers. For example, if you go into a bank where I supplied candy, what I would tell the receptionist or the customer service person or the loans officer that you, the customer, is waiting to see, I would say to them, listen, you see whenever you see a line in here and it's building up, especially when people are getting frustrated, here is your line that you're going to greet them with when they come up to your counter. You're going to say to them, hello, Mr. Black. I realize you have had to wait a lot longer than usual today and I sincerely apologize for that. And as we work diligently as an organization to reduce the wait time, I would like to offer you a candy and I know it doesn't make up for your trouble and the time wasted today, but it's the least I can do. Would you like a candy, Mr. Black? Listen, my rock stars, I don't know many people out there who wouldn't find that approach appealing. And if they were angry, it would possibly help to diffuse them because one, the receptionist is acknowledging that they have a problem. Two, she's saying the company's doing something about it. And three, she's giving a peace offering which is the candy. And listen, my rock stars, wherever we did this, the results were phenomenal. So as our differentiator, we didn't just offer a product and a service, but we even provided a way to appease customers with the product that we're offering by training up staff to use it to boost the company's image. Now, to get these companies on board, I created a very straightforward, simple proposal that says this is the offering, this is the cost, this is the differentiator, and this is a, like not an experiment, but that it was a project that we were doing to determine a specific outcome, and we're asking them to participate and we were able to get a few companies on board. Now let's say that the number of companies that came on board were about 30. And these 30 included banks or financial institutions, doctors' offices, gas stations that would actually resell the candy to their customers, pharmacies or convenience stores. And actually there were a few street vendors that were in the mix. So I would recommend as well that if you you have the bandwidth to work with street vendors that you do so because their candy it sells a lot faster to my surprise than the stores do now when you're pitching to the gas station or the service centers do you know how when people buy gas there's usually a few coins that they have left over what you do in that pitch is you tell the gas station attendant that you're not to try to get the customer to spend additional money what you can say to them is have a little candy container out there at the pump and when they're done pumping their gas for those who are paying whether by card or by cash you can say to them your gas bill today is a hundred and five dollars and seventy five cents would you like to make that an even one hundred and six dollars and have this candy instead or at the cashier counter when you come and you pay your cash and you have a few cents left over over, the cashier can say, hey, would you like a candy for your kids or your nephews or nieces or even for yourself for the change that you have left over? Listen to me. Most people will actually say yes, especially if it's loose change. So you're not asking people to find new money in that context. You're basically saving them from having to carry change, which most people these days don't even bother with. That concept can also work in places like a pharmacy where people are waiting for their prescriptions to be filled and in other locations where people are waiting and the end result is that they need to pay for something you can slip a few candy in and the business can get their cashiers savvy enough to offer this candy for spare change now for the street vendors it's a simple
simple model. You supply them with candy and they walk and they sell it to people who are driving or who are walking by. And what they can do is they can have like three kisses in a bag for a hundred Jamaican dollars or four or five kisses in a bag for a dollar in US. Now as it pertains to your capital, the candy jar that I bought cost about $22 on Amazon. Very modern and very classy. And the kisses, which come in different colors, is about $27. Now, back in the day, I could have gotten this for $22, but it looks like more people are buying and selling candy, so the price is inching up. Can you get this candy cheaper? You certainly can. You just need to search the internet. So of these 20 persons or businesses that we're working with, 10 of them, let's say their offices, 15 are gas stations, pharmacies, or convenience stores, and five of them are vendors. So for your offices, you'll need about 10 candy jars, which is $220. And the candy jars, if you're shipping them to you, they're a little bit bulky. So between shipping and customs, I suggest you budget about $400 US in total for your candy jars. The cost per candy, like I said earlier, is $27 per bag. And the bag of kisses has 400 pieces in it. The the duty shipping and everything I estimate to be about $40 when you add in what you pay to buy the candy plus the other charges. Now the cost for the candy as I mentioned earlier is $27 per bag and each bag of kisses has about 400 pieces in it. By the time you add in shipping and customs you can budget about $40 instead of the $27 that you pay for each bag of 400 kisses. So it means that your cost per unit or your cost per kiss is 10 cents US or the equivalent of 15 Jamaican dollars if you're in Jamaica. Now we're going to mark up everything by 100% so basically we're going to double the price. So when we buy the candy for 10 cents we're going to sell for 20 cents or if it's 15 Jamaican dollars we're going to sell it for 30 Jamaican dollars. Now as it pertains to the banks, the offices, the BPOs, they're going to take again 10 candy jars and they're taking anywhere from one to two bags per day. So let's average it out and say we're selling all those 10 companies or those 10 places 30 bags of kisses per month. So the revenue per bag at 20 cents per piece and that's US. So that's 20 cents times the 400 pieces you're making $80 in revenue per bag. And the profit is the $40 that you're spending which includes your customs duty and some other expenses. And of course this is gross profit before all your other expenses which we'll talk about at the end. But your profit when you take that $80 that you're collecting per bag of kisses and you subtract the $40 that you're paying per bag, your profit is $40 US dollars per bag. So for 30 bags per month, that equates to $1,200 in profit. And that is $1,200 per location. And remember, in this category, we had 10 locations. So that is $12,000 US dollars from this category per month for selling kisses or candy. Now, for those living in Jamaica, that's 1.8 million Jamaican dollars in a month. But we're not done yet because remember, we have the 15 service stations or gas stations or pharmacies or convenience stores, and we're not giving them a candy jar because they're going to have the candy available on their shelves. We're assuming that they're also going to take a bag per day and they can buy it at 20 cents per piece and sell it for 25 cents or they can come up with deals, as I mentioned earlier, and sell like four pieces for a dollar US or three pieces for a hundred Jamaican dollars. They can do it how they want to. The bottom line is I'm making $40 in profit per bag. So for 30 bags in a month, that's 1200 US dollars. And for 15 locations, that's 18,000 US dollars in a month from the convenience stores and those other locations like pharmacies and this is 2.7 million Jamaican dollars in a month. 
Now let's assume that the vendors also sell about a bag per day, which again is 1200 US dollars in profit, that times five vendors, and that's 6,000 US dollars per month in profit that you're making, which is 900,000 Jamaican dollars. So when you add up everything from the offices, you're gonna make 12,000 US dollars, from the stores, you're gonna make 18,000 US dollars, and from the vendors, you're making 6,000 US dollars per month that is 36,000 US dollars per month or 5.4 million Jamaican dollars per month selling what candy kisses in this example to be specific now to make a million US dollars at a profit of 40 US dollars per bag and if you do that over a 12 month period it means you need to sell 12 bags of candy in a day if you want to spread it over a five year period to make a million US dollars selling candy you only need to sell 13 bags of candy per Per day which means you only need to find 13 partners and again it can be receptionist desk vendors service stations pharmacies you have a ton of business places that you can approach with this solution that's gonna see value in it because of your differentiators and as such it should not be difficult for you to find 13 vendors to partner with and make a million US dollars in five years selling candy. Now, this business does require you to get some upfront capital, although it's not a lot compared to traditional businesses. And this is where the Rockstar Grant comes in. And if you have not watched this video yet, I encourage you to do so because these are grants that I will be issuing out to you, my Rockstars, who are my subscriber family. And to qualify, you will just need to complete a simple one-page business plan template. If you want to take it up on notch you can do the entire document and again I cover it in this video here you will be able to qualify for grants that range anywhere from 10,000 US dollars and I'll be issuing these every month to as much as 50,000 US dollars every month and you will know when a grant will be issued because whenever you look at my views for a month and you realize that I got a hundred thousand views on average per day for that month you know the grant is gonna be be $10,000. So in essence, if I get 3 million views in a month, I'll be issuing a grant of $10,000. If I get 9 million views in a month, it will be $30,000 for that month. If I get 15 million views in a month, I'll be issuing out $50,000 US dollars for that grant. And this is not a loan. It's not me investing in your business. It's me giving you money to start a business or to pursue a passion or an initiative on your path to achieving financial freedom. So this is the kind of grant that you could use to start your candy business and to launch it successfully. So stay tuned my rock stars because that time is coming when I'll be able to start issuing these grants. Now several of you have already started to send me emails about these grants. We're not ready yet and you will not be able to access the grant with an email. You're going to have to watch this video here that explains how to complete a business plan template and while it's gonna only be a one pager not as complex as I share in this video you will need that one page to apply for the grant so please stop sending me emails because right now I am having to ignore them because it's not the right way to get access to that money and I will announce when we're ready to take applications for the grant and I'll actually do a video explaining exactly how to fill out that application or that business plan template specifically for the Rockstar grant. Now the last thing that I'm going to cover is logistics because if you're selling candy you can't be going to these companies every single day to deliver the candy. Absolutely not. You need to partner with a bearer company and you need to have a central location where you store your candy and the bearer would go to that location and retrieve the candy and distribute it as is necessary. So that service is going to cost you some money and you'll need to include it and subtract it from
from your gross profit that I spoke about earlier. But let me give you some perspective. If you have 20 locations across Jamaica, as an example, and your profit is only 20 US dollars per bag, not the $40 per bag that you'll be able to sell it for. We're being conservative here. And you have a beer or service that delivers this candy. Basically, I kept the candy in my basement, which was very cool, and I kept it in a locked and sealed container. And I got this container to buy from Price Mart. You can get it from a Sam's Club or anywhere like that, and it's a huge, plastic rubber-made container that can be sealed from air and you need to keep it in a cool place and ensure that you manage the expiration dates and you sell your oldest products first. With each location taking a bag of candy, again at $20 in profit, per candy, not the $40 I mentioned earlier, for 30 bags, it made about 12,000 US dollars, and the Bira service was about 4,000 US dollars to deliver the candy. So you're still gonna make a tidy profit when you're done, even after you take out your other expenses. Now my rock stars, we have come to the end of another video, and if you found value in what I just shared, I would really appreciate you liking this video. And please don't hesitate to join our family of rock stars by hitting the subscribe button below. Thanks again for all your support and until next time my rock stars walk good.